Marple, where are we? This is the Academy Dormitory for girls. A friend of mine lives here, Angelica. She doesn't attend any special courses as we do. She's taken a leave of absence in the past on account of illness, but it's become more frequent of late. This time, she's been absent for two weeks straight. Huh. <sighs> Marple sighed as she looked up at the dorm. I visited her last week, but I've heard she isn't getting any better, so I wanted to visit her again. As any friend would, naturally. Now I know why Marple appeared so troubled before. I recalled what Marple was like in the classroom. Then shall we go see her? A surprise was upon us the moment we went to enter the building. Ah! Hello? S sorry The student tried to run away, but Marple grabbed him by the arm. Do you always respond so flippantly when storming headfirst into a lady? Where are your manners? I am sorry, miss, but I'm in a hurry. He shook away her grip and was quickly off before she could say more. Who was that? He seemed to spring out from the dorm. I'm not sure. Emily, are you all right? Me? Oh, yes. Good. If you were to get hurt, people might say it's my fault since I asked you to accompany me. How should I read her being more concerned for that than me? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, shall we? Oh, wait! Marple! I followed her into the dorm. Angelica. It's so lovely to see you again, Sarah. Sitting in bed and wearing a thick coat over a nightgown was a young girl. A sparkling smile awaited us the moment she saw her guest was Marple. No need to get up, Angie. Thank you. Oh, I can't believe my eyes. <gasps> Angelica gasped as she spotted me behind her friend. Allow me to introduce to you a girl from my class. Her name is... Miss Whiteley, isn't it? I saw you in the paper. It said you're Her Majesty's detective. Th that's me, yes. Emily will do. You know who I am, then? Yes, very well. I asked Sarah about you, but she only mentioned you were schoolmates. I didn't think she was paying me any mind. Oh, thank you, Sarah! She just happened to come with me, that's all. <laughs> now, don't be shy. I know you brought her for me. It's exciting to meet a girl of such celebrity. N now, I wouldn't call myself celebrated. Celebrity? Even my ears were burning from embarrassment. I'm ever so delighted to meet you, Emily. I'm Angelica. Well, Angelica, the pleasure is all mine. Her physical condition made it so that smiling took great effort, but smile she did. For my part, the sight was a rewarding one. How I envy the two of you. I've had to stay in bed for quite some time, you know, so I only get to see my roommate and my doctor. Oh, and Sarah, of course. That's it? I thought a student from the choir recently visited. What? What makes you think that? Her grin shifted to one now possessed by nerves, though she did attempt to mask the change. When I visited you last, you never rose from your bed. But this time, well, you were sitting up and you're wearing a pretty nightgown. And there's dirt on the floor near the window that's roughly the size of a footprint. You're head of the choir, I believe, so I thought someone from there had visited you after school. Well, I can only assume the dirt is from my flatmate's shoes. I was thirsty, so I rose to put the kettle on, but when she returned, I asked if she could make me a cup instead. Doubtful. The way Angelica's pupils danced said there was a different story. Something is certainly going on with Angelica. 
My apologies. I must have been confused. Th that must be it. You've always been one to come up with silly theories. But I do miss the choir very much. I hope I can attend school again soon. The air around her became heavy with a lonely gloom as she mumbled. Angie, are you feeling unwell? A bit nauseous, yes. My stomach hurts as well, and I still don't have an appetite. Why not see another doctor? You too. Pardon me if this sounds too direct, but I refuse to change doctors. But I've not heard reputable things about that man. Oh, those rumors. All very exaggerated. My lord, am I ever blessed. My flatmate fusses as much as you. She'll bake my favorite snacks to boost my appetite, but I always end up eating so little. It must feel awful to not be able to indulge in your favorite snacks. The very thought depressed me. Snacks? You ought to start eating something more nutritious. What if I bring you vegetable soup on my next visit? Well, if it's your home recipe, it might taste delicious, I suppose. Next time, then. For today, you may indulge my baked meringues. Marple, against her scoldings for better food, was swift in producing a carefully wrapped packet of her own sweets. Can't wait. Oh, I wish my appetite were up for it now, but I shall eat some later, I promise. A vigorous knocking on the door interrupted us. It opened immediately after. Oh, hello, who are you? Angie, I've made you some tea! Hmm? You have guests? The girl who entered the room twinkled with a question in her eyes. You have excellent timing, Alyssa. My friends have come to see me. That's right, you weren't here during Sarah's last visit. Angie, is this your flatmate? The one and only. I'd like you to say hello to Alyssa. She's in the choir with me. It's nice to meet you. Sarah Marple. This girl here is in my class, Emily Whiteley. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've heard plenty about you from both Angie and the paper, Emily. Uh, oh, how lovely. Alyssa, Sarah's brought some baked goods. You can have some if you'd like. And I do! I'll go make some more tea. In no time at all, the four of us were intimately gathered with cups in hand. By the by, Alyssa is learning to make scones and jam. Her clotted cream is the best I've ever had. Its almond flavor complements the scones perfectly, and... You won't get anywhere flattering me so much, Angie. Take care not to spoil her, even if she is sick. I would never! I've been sure to prepare healthy meals like vegetable soup and porridge and such. She despises them, but I never stop nagging her till she's eaten all her carrots and celery. Oatmeal, too. Yuck. I never forget to take my medicine, either. Was it your doctor who advised you watch what you eat? Yes. Dr. Fow comes to see me from his clinic near the academy, since the walks have been making me faint. I've been seeing him since I was small. Even when it's so close. How terrible. I do hope this will pass soon. I would love that. I want to practice singing for the Christmas concert, and since I'm head of the choir, I'd like to see how the other students are faring. If only you were more dedicated with anything else as much as you are with the choir. Come on. That's not a nice thing to say about a sick person now, is it? <laughs> she might have a point. Regardless, I wish you well enough to be able to attend choir practice soon. Marple grew much lighter, much friendlier as she conversed with these girls. In truth, visiting a girl's dormitory was a first for me, as was visiting a friend's bedroom. I became distracted by nearly everything around me, head turning this way and that to inspect what precisely made this place feel like Angelica and Alyssa's. Excuse me, Angelica. Would it be a bother if I were to browse through your room? By all means, browse. Alyssa, what do you think? I don't mind. Thank you! 
I approached the two trophies that I noticed on the shelf as soon as I stepped in the room. Each one was labeled Silver Prize Spring Bird Award. I don't know if that's going to be needed later. Again, I can't... So this is just like, you're having fun right now. You're not detect de detectivizing. <laughs> you're not detecting anything that needs to be detected. May I ask what these trophies are for? Oh, uh, listen, I won those after we placed second in a contest. It was during our first year here, if I recall. Must have been quite the year. I'd like to hear more about it when you're better. I wandered yet again before catching something else on the shelf. There was a tiny brown bottle with a label I'd never seen before. Huh. Hange Shashinto and Saiko Keishito? What's this? Sounds Japanese. Can I make a note of this? I can? It's so weird how sometimes it's... It won't let you record anything. Find something interesting. Perhaps I'd been staring too intently. I hadn't the clue Marple was watching me till she spoke. I was, um, wondering what this is. I plucked the bottle from the shelf and showed it to her. That's my medicine. My doctor recently prescribed it to me. It's a Chinese herbal medicine, I suppose. I've been told it was specially blended for me. Ah, Chinese. Okay. So that's what it is. I wonder how it compares to Western medicine. I want to read the label. Fao Clinic. Same as her doctor's name she mentioned earlier. <laughs> it smells awfully funny, but it isn't so bad when... <coughs> Angelica? Very suddenly, Angelica was attacked by a fit that refused to stop. Breaths between grew shorter and shorter, rousing panic for her company. Kinda sounds like Earl Alvin. Angelica! Alyssa, call the doctor! R right away! Our fears worsened when Angelica slumped over. Oh no. Convulsions, vomiting, slipping in and out of consciousness. Come on, let me read my diary. I took notes of this stuff. Instinct told me that something wasn't quite right as we left Angelica's room. Marple, regarding Angelica's symptoms... Marple? Hmm? Oh, I was lost in thought. What was it you said? She remained in a daze as we walked back to the academy. Well, something struck me regarding Angelica's symptoms. Do you know the name of her illness? As far as I'm aware, no one knows. Her symptoms are so distinctive and still no one's figured it out? But in recent years, her condition was beginning to stabilize. She was finally starting to get better. She was taking less medicine and was finally starting to live a normal life. So why? Her sadness was so apparent that my heart was roused. I want to help her. I'm going to check something about her symptoms. It's only a hunch, but the book Home showed this morning has found itself at the back of my mind. You're a kind girl, Emily. And so was she. Marple was grateful to me, but her kindness, hidden beneath layers of those dollish features which express little on the surface, was the inspiration that made me want to be kind. It's hardly trouble at all for a new friend. It's too late today, but we don't have any classes tomorrow. How would you like to do some investigating with me? I'd like that. Do you have a place in mind? I'm hoping to dive into some research, well, questioning, so I should like to see Holmes and Watson at their Baker Street flat. They'll likely have some thoughts on the matter. Whom do I wish to speak with? Oh. Of course, our boo. I'd like Holmes' opinion. He was the one who brought all that material to class, and no one else could best share his thoughts objectively. Marple nodded in agreement. Very well. Then let's meet along Baker Street tomorrow. Alright, it's a date. Can I read my diary yet? Sure, fine. 
221B Baker Street was the address for homes in Watson's shared flat. Does it just stay in the family? They were one of several within a charming three-story brick building, which Marple and I now stood before. Oh, look! We're in our everyday clothes. You guys both look so cute. What a handsome little flat. And they've even room to spare to make it their office. I've heard rumors that the landlady here is a young girl. Okay, so not the Mrs. Hudson, but Mrs. Hudson's daughter or granddaughter? Young? Hmm. Does that bother you? Uh, uh, no! It would never... Never? You certainly gave the impression that it did. Here we are. Why would it bother me? Huh, Sarah? Oops. Marvel made such a sudden stop that I nearly bumped into her. Conveniently, she ignored my clumsiness and knocked on the door. It only took a moment for the door to open a pinch. Oh, hello, you opened your own door. Yes, how may I... What are you two doing here? Good afternoon, Holmes. I have something that requires asking, so I came here with Marple. Does it have to be now? You can wait till Monday, surely. I'm busy. Please, Holmes. There's a case I'd like to solve, and your input would be quite valuable to me. For a short time, Holmes eyed myself and Marple back and forth. Oh. He then sighed his common, exasperated sigh and opened the door to allow us in. So what is it? Make it short and simple. I will do my best, sir. Ooh, let me look at this room! Ah, it looks beautiful. I love it. And you also play the violin. Great. Is that your dad's violin or your own violin? I have questions. Whoops, what did I just knock? I don't even know what moved on my desk, but something did. She's had convulsions, vomiting, and slipping in and out of consciousness. Do you know of any illness which would cause all these symptoms at once? Hmm. There aren't any, as far as I'm aware, no. No, it won't do to rush to conclusions. Adam Stokes syndrome is similar, but only similar, not exact. It wouldn't result in vomiting. If I'm honest, I find it difficult to think of anything that should cause all three. Does she have any clear injuries? None that I'm aware of. I see. What could it be, then? Holmes paced around the room, one hand stroking his chin in deep thought. He then stopped and removed the research materials he had presented the day before from the shelf. It reminds me more of drug poisoning than illness. Same. Holmes continued as he leafed through the pages. If it is indeed poison, several things could fit. Apricots, cowbane, poison nuts, aconite, and conium were the most likely candidates. A variety of plants and their toxic symptoms were listed on the pages. Well, just to be certain, how simple would it be to mix one of these plants with medication? Very simple, if one has the knowledge and skill. Like a chemist, perhaps. That's my medicine. My doctor recently prescribed it to me. It's a Chinese herbal medicine, I suppose. I've been told it was specially blended for me. Fao Clinic? Same as her doctor's name she mentioned earlier. Mm. You're such a dear, Holmes. I'll bring you some delicious sweets next time. <laughs> he liked it. I'd rather you not. Unlike you, I don't have any interest in... Let us be off, Marple! Right then. We'll see you in class, Holmes. I left with Marple in a hurry. Later, boo! Thank you! Our next destination was to be Fowl Clinic. As Angelica described to us the afternoon before, it was but a short walk from the academy. Oh my. What an impressive-looking doctor. Yes, may I help you? 
The doctor who greeted us was so ordinary in appearance that he was more dubious than unremarkable. S excuse me. Suspicion was weaved into his coat, which was wrinkled, and mistrust was the brush to his slovenly hair. <laughs> the book stacked into mountains within the room behind him reinforced the impression of a man who cared little for company. Something told me to stay wary. You are Angelica Mayani's doctor, correct? Hmm? Yes, I am. What of it? I'm a friend of hers, and if it isn't any trouble, would you mind? Would you tell me more about the medicine you prescribed? Miss, she is my patient. I can't hand her chart over to any stranger who comes in asking. And her condition is baffling me as much as it likely baffles you. I'm not a stranger. As I said, I'm her friend. And as I said, she is my patient. You aren't the first to make a clever excuse to get what they want from me. I'm her mother, I'm her lover, or I'm her pet, or whatever they please. I'm no fool. I don't know of anyone who would call themselves her pet. But we earnestly wish to save her, Doctor. Would you please help me? For this ring's sake. It was time to reveal the ring I had been given by Her Majesty, but it had less of an effect than I prayed it would. He merely stared in silence, waiting for me to speak again. Mm. I beg you! Are you giving that to me? You must understand. Her Majesty the Queen gifted me the- Hmm? But you must know, so this doesn't make sense. I was told that anyone would help me if I presented the ring. What's that? Are you all right in the head? I'm afraid I don't provide treatment for mental illness. E excuse me, but do you happen to read the paper at all? I would never read such cheap entertainment. Baseless gossip. Every word. Can't trust it. That solves it. Emily, I fear the request means nothing for those who haven't seen it in writing. That is the only place I recall her asking everyone to help you. That's true. I read it there also. But even without it, he's being unreasonable. And how is there someone who doesn't read the paper in this day and age? Is he unliterate? Emily, did you mean to ask if he was illiterate? Ah, uh, right. That's the one. I don't suppose you've been using the wrong word till now. Well, yes, it appears that I have. How silly of me. Nothing else to ask? Off with you, then! I've work to do! Okay. Against our best efforts, the door had been slammed in our noses before we managed to step inside. Well, this didn't go as I planned. I'd rather not give up just yet. Listen! We should ring for the yard and have him arrested! Don't be so dramatic, Emily. But doesn't this upset you? Of course it does, but being upset does nothing to help. So, stay! Oh, dash it! I'm not a puppy! It was a joke, dear. Don't take it to heart. If you'll hear me out, that doctor has no motive for poisoning Angelica. One can surmise he's experimenting with new medicines on his patients, but that's unlikely. You're right. Were he doing such a thing on all of his patients, he would have been caught much earlier. Already in prison, even. Then, what do you make of Angie's condition with that in mind, Emily? I think... As we began to give more serious thought to the issue, we ran unexpectedly into someone we knew. Oh, hello, Lupin. Why, hello, Miss Whiteley. Miss Marple. What brings you here? Lupin! We could ask you the same. Though there were no classes today, he still wore his academy uniform. Th this is a clinic, isn't it? So I came to see my, my doctor. Are you sick, then? I feel nauseous and my stomach hurts. The clinic here is close to the academy, so it's a convenient place to visit whenever I have a problem. I was already close by since I had to go to the library, so I thought I might as well come here. His symptoms are similar to Angie's. How do you feel? Much better after my consultation with Dr. Fow. 
If you don't mind my asking, what medicine did he prescribe? My medicine? I don't mind. A moment, please. Same one. Lupin retrieved a small brown bottle from his pocket. Its label read. <laughs> its label read. Its label read. Hangi Shashinto and Saiko Keshito. It's the same one! You're right! It's just like Angie's! Lupin, are you absolutely certain you feel better? Have you ever felt faint after taking that? I I'm not sure I understand. Why are you so worried about this? And I've been feeling wonderful. It's a miracle uh, how, um, how much better I've felt since taking that medicine. The answer took us both by surprise. Whenever Dr. Fow prescribes medicine, he gives each of his patients their own bottle. I always have this one with me when I go to him. Then Angelica has her own personal bottle as well. I still haven't a clue as to what his motives would be, but if there's even a slight possibility, we must investigate. Let's look at the contents of her bottle. Even if it turns out to be nothing, we'll have narrowed down the scope of our work. By the way, Lupin, what made you so sick in the first place? Since I'm a st student and live alone, my landlady invited me and a few other students to her flat for a homemade meal. I began to feel nauseous after dinner. It turned out to be the m mushrooms from the mountains she used in her cooking. You didn't make a mess of things again, did you? Incur her wrath in some way. I didn't know such a th th thing! No! I wasn't the only one to fall ill. She and the other students did t too! It was a disaster! <laughs> we should run along and see Angie. Thank you, Lupin. Stay well! Oh, um... Th thank you, I suppose. As it had only been a day since Angie collapsed, Marple was gentle when she knocked on the door. Neither of us wished to disturb her unduly if she was able to get some sleep. The door slowly opened. Alyssa was on the other side. Good afternoon. I have something I'd like to borrow. May I step inside? C certainly Marple was not nearly as gentle and thought with Angie's roommate, having forced the girl aside quite intentionally as she entered. I was able to spot Angelica sleeping through the gap in the door. To my relief, she looked at peace. I entered. Hmm? The first thing to grab my attention was a tiny, hard shell, barely noticeable with it being the size of one's thumb, on the ground just before the shelf. I don't know what about it intrigued me so, but intrigued I was, and so I plucked and examined it closely. What was this? Why did it feel so out of place? And why am I so bothered by it? Emily, let's go. Oh, are you finished? We can leave now, yes. I have enough of it for us to examine. Marple showed me a small bottle. Come, I'm leaving. Wait, Marple! And just where do you mean to examine it? Isn't it obvious? We have need to a madman obsessed with data and a doctor in the making. Holmes and Watson, then? <laughs> Marple moved at an admirable speed for having such short legs. I was not tall myself, but it took considerable work on my end not to be left behind. We both stopped upon hearing a quarrel in the distance, however. Don't lie to me, Rathus. You're horrible. How could you be seeing two girls in the club? There is a line and you've crossed it. I tried to look the other way for a club mate, but I can't do that anymore. A girl was shouting at the top of her lungs with fury from the courtyard. That sounds rather serious. We pricked our ears and our ears and listened. Alyssa and Angie. You see them both at the same time, and now Angie's ill. That's too much stress for the poor girl. Hardly. Her doctor is a quack. If she'd gone to a real doctor, she wouldn't have They were talking about Angie. I stepped forwards with a sudden vigor to hear more. Marple? She had seized me by the arm before I could get far. Don't, Emily. What? Why? 
Her stare was so piercing that I couldn't move even if I wanted. Realizing she must have something in mind, I acquiesced without protest. Yet, it wasn't long before we were noticed. I haven't done anything wrong. I've been faithful. Hmm? He looked directly at me. Y you're Oh! I recognize you. Ah! S sorry It was the same boy who fled from the girls' dormitory just yesterday, and he made to flee the scene once more. Wait! Did you come here from the H hold on a minute! He hastily cut me off. You two know one another? Or is it that you're seeing three women? No, no. Please listen, it's a misunderstanding. Curious as I am by this affair, affair, would either of you mind terribly if we asked about something else? We're in the midst of an investigation. If we can find the right answers, we might be able to save a friend of ours. Hmm. Of course not. You're Sarah Marple and Emily Whiteley from the detectives course, I think. What would you like to know? What can you tell me about Angelica Maiani? About Angie? I feel like I'm not the right person to ask. He is the- If I may speak, I'm not seeing anyone else. The other student, wholly the skeptic, watched him with a fuming scrutiny that hoped to counter any word that stood out to her as fiction. He can- Excuse me. He continued with caution. I have a serious relationship with Angie. I've been visiting her in her room because I've been worried about her. So you really are the one who visited Angie right before we arrived. But boys aren't allowed in the girls' dorm. If someone were to find out, you would be expelled without delay. So that lie from Angie about having no visitors was meant to protect you now, was it? Did Alyssa know that you were visiting Angie? She did. She caught me once when I was there. I'd asked her to keep it secret, and she promised she wouldn't tell anyone. So that's how it is. I'm not seeing both of them. I swear it on my life. He couldn't have been making a stronger effort to plead his innocence. I admit that I was seeing Alyssa before, but we aren't together now. In fact, she's been very supportive of me and Angie. There are days when she brings homemade scones and jam to everyone in the club. I don't have a poor word to spare for her, really. I can tell that both Angelica and Alyssa are precious to him. If you have a way of helping Angelica, then please, do what you can. Of course. Thank you. Rafus left the courtyard. I understand that he cares for both of them, but being equally kind isn't kindness in and of itself. Would you be willing to share anything more about Angie and Alyssa? What else? Well, they've been close friends for as long as I can recall. It never crossed my mind that they would both fall in love with Rafus. Angie is head of the choir and is most strict with practice, but she always lights up like a child the moment Alyssa comes in with all her baked goods. Rafus mentioned the baked goods as well. Scones and jam, was it? Apricot jam? What kind of scones does she make? She's made quite a spread in the past, but the most common are either plain or with raisins. Her jam is strawberry or marmalade, both oh so heavenly too, if I do say so myself. I see. Has she ever once made something other than scones and jam for the choir? No, just those. We love tea breaks, so food is often a topic of conversation. Alyssa's scones have never failed to please. Thank you. You were a great help. We said our farewells to her before leaving. Mm. What is it, Marple? Are you concerned about her scones? Yes, a little. Angie brought them up rather frequently. She told me about them as well, saying Alyssa's clotted cream perfectly complimented them. That's correct. How do you feel about Rafus? I don't believe he's lying. His gaze was true. There was no uncharacteristic sweating. He had a clear and concise response. Above all else, he fully admitted to visiting Angie's room. A part of me does feel uneasy with Angie lying to me to protect him. He did sneak into a girl's dormitory after all. I suppose it's romantic. He's gone out of his way to see her, even breaking the rules for her. And when she's ill. 
She must feel happy to have someone like him. I wish I could understand. I can only think of the risk that comes when breaking the rules. That's one way to th see things. Marvel must not have any interest in love. With nothing more to debate on the issue, we return to the Baker Street office. <laughs>